In this video, we're going to take a look at motion trajectories inside of Motion Builder 6. This is a new feature that allows you to see a 3D representation of your animation curves live in your viewer window. Very nice. So let's begin by bringing in a character so I can show you something that's moving. I'll just go ahead and grab Mia. She's probably our all-around favorite character around here. And under motions, we'll jump down under generic woman, grab run W, let me switch to story, and we'll grab the jog on object animation and just drag drop that into story. Just to get some basic animation set up so we could yeah. take a look at these uh, trajectories. So let me shorten my frame length down to about 55, and Mia runs, jumps up onto her desk, and just keeps right on going. With the key thing being, she's animated. That's right. So let's take a look at her motion trajectory. It's very easily done. I'm just going to select her hips effector, and at the very top of the viewer window, you now have the trajectories button. We click that, and wait a second as it plots out the, traje the trajectory. I can say it. And uh, don't be too frightened if uh, when you click this button, it takes a moment for this to appear. That is not going to slow down Motion Builder one bit. It's still just as fast as ever. And now you have a 3D representation of where the hips are going in your scene. And anything we select, as of this moment, we can see the trajectory for. So there's the, the left hand as it wags up and down, doing its thing. Now there are several options, or three options really, you can mix and match them that come along with using trajectories. Uh, the first off is auto load selection. Now this is on by default. This means anything you select, you'll automatically see the trajectory for that object. For example, even if I select all of my effectors at once, we just have to wait a, a few more seconds longer while Motion Builder plots out all these trajectories. Wow. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun to work with. Mm-hmm. But it does look cool. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe maybe not the kind of thing you'd actually do if you're animating, but if you just need something that looks cool based on your animation, well, there you go. So uh, there's all of our trajectories all at once. Now, if I switch this off, all of our trajectories disappear. We also have the power to load them up by hand, like kind of load them up singly, if you will. So let's just grab, say, the uh, the three effectors on the spine, and I'll choose Set on Selection. So I click, and I only get those three objects. Then let's say I change my mind, decide I really only wanted the hips. We can deselect the hips, so all I have are the upper two spine effectors. And we can choose clear on selection. That means whatever's selected gets taken out, so we no longer have those available. Finally, we have... Now you can also add in. You can then select oh, sure. like your left and right Absolutely. Wrist. I can grab anything I want, and I can uh, come in and choose set on selection again. And it'll keep what was already there and add these to it. That's right. Very That's right. And just keep on adding and removing until you see exactly what you need to see. And you can keep on working with this. Excellent. Then at any moment when you decide, you know, I'm done with these trajectories, they're cool, but they've served their purpose, you can choose clear all and they all disappear. And for now, I'll go ahead and switch auto selection back on. So what I'd also like to show you is how these trajectories update while animating. And to make the process uh, simpler and a little bit faster to understand, I'll go ahead and bring up a new scene. And we won't save the changes. Sorry, Mia. And I'll switch over to Elements. We'll grab a cube in, and I'll make the cube nice and big for the home audience. And let me do some real fast freehand animation with this cube. So Now keep in mind, trajectories, of course, is still turned on. Still turned on. So as I animate, you're going to see the trajectories appear, which is a very cool little feature. So uh, we'll hit, I'm using uh, the Maya key set, so I'm hitting S to place a key. And we'll slide forward to, say, frame 30. And move again. So immediately, boom, trajectory appears because there's a keyframe denoting we have animation between these two points. So we'll come forward a little bit again on the timeline and say over here and say somewhere over here. And I think I'll go up with the last one. So we'll come up here to frame 150 and boom. So here's my awesome animation. Now if I were to go into the F curves for this animation, and uh, I guess in this case I'll pick on translate Y, as we make any adjustments to the keyframes inside our F curves, you'll notice that our trajectory will update right along with us. And that's even if I adjust uh, tangent handles or anything at all. It's going to change the way our, our uh, trajectory looks. Also, you'll notice along the trajectory are several small yellow points. What these are are representations of the current frame. 
This means that the closer these points are together, the slower your object is going to be moving. The further they're spaced apart, naturally, the faster your object's going to be moving. So if you were to really start stretching out your keyframes to get some differentiation, you'll notice right here I've got some points that are very, very close together. And then toward the end, they're spaced quite a bit more apart. So as I rewind and hit play, we're going nice and quick. And then as we come to a close, we're slowing down because those points are right on top of each other. So this really wraps up everything that I wanted to discuss as far as trajectories go. They're very easy to use, uh, very, very powerful, and super helpful for controlling exactly where your objects are going to be in your scene while you animate. That's right. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks.